right now, just a few miles from this stage in the heart of Southern California, we are 3D printing rockets. If you're like most people I say this to, you either think I'm talking about the little toy rockets many of us played with as kids, or you think I might be crazy, but I'm neither. I'm talking about this full-scale metal launch your satellite into orbit around the Earth rockets being 3D printed by a revolutionary platform that's fundamentally changing aerospace manufacturing and that has the potential to do the same thing in other industries. This is the Terran 1 rocket sitting on the pad at Cape Canaveral, Florida, preparing to launch. It's seven and a half feet in diameter, over 100 feet tall, and it weighs almost 200,000 pounds. 85% of it is 3D printed. And in the near future, we expect to increase that to 95%. The rocket with the second highest 3D printed content is less than 5%. What you see here, this is the rocket that's going to change aerospace forever. <laughs> For as long as I can remember, I've been fascinated by space and anything that flies. My parents have even told me how excited I was to watch the first sh space shuttle launch in April of 1981. I was only two, so I don't remember that event. But by the time I was 10, I was a real fan, excited about the space shuttle and devouring any articles I could find to see what's next in space. But sadly, by the time I graduated from college, 20 years after the first flight of the space shuttle, it was still the most innovative space program I could find. How did the innovative industry of the 60s, 70s, and 80s, the industry that brought us inventions like GPS, Velcro, and Tang, <laughs> appear to stand still as innovations in phones, computers, and cars accelerated? As I considered my options after graduation, I was convinced I'd missed the golden age of space, and I decided to go work on airplanes instead. I remember the excitement I felt as I stepped onto a storied campus for my first day of work. This was the company that commercialized aviation, and I just knew that I was going to get the chance to work on exciting problems that would lead to amazing products, products that would make our lives better, over time, however, I began to feel disillusioned. Innovation in industry is a function of new product introductions. The fewer the new products, the slower the innovation. And we had not announced a new aircraft in over a decade. The lack of new programs made me fear that I'd missed the golden age of aviation as well. And I wasn't alone in my thinking. Industry studies continue to show that aerospace is slowing its development times year over year, while other industries are introducing products of increasing complexity while reducing or at least maintaining their development times. Being inside the aerospace industry has allowed me to see firsthand that the slowing of innovation in space and airplanes actually stems from the same underlying problem. We haven't fundamentally changed how we build aerospace systems since the Apollo program in the 1960s. This is the Saturn manufacturing line 60 years ago. If a technician were to walk out of that factory and into a modern aerospace factory, they'd actually recognize almost everything they'd seen. They'd recognize the labor-intensive processes used by thousands of vendors to build the millions of parts that go into one system. They'd recognize the large and expensive machines and thousands of highly trained technicians required to put those millions of parts together. They'd recognize the mountains of validated processes and carefully scripted work instructions that have stood the test of time. Each of those elements are incredibly expensive. And combined, they've made the cost of trying anything new, of developing a new product, nearly insurmountable. 3D printing has the potential to change all of that. 
eliminating the constraints on innovation and allowing industry to introduce new and fundamentally better products. At its heart, 3D printing is a flexible automation technology that simplifies manufacturing by replacing physical complexity with digital complexity. Now, that's a mouthful, so let's break it down. Flexibility. In a traditional factory, you'll see large and expensive machines that are designed to do one and only one thing reliably and repeatedly. Let's think of each of those machines as a set of templates designed to allow you to draw an image. Well, templates are fantastic for drawing the same image over and over again. Even a small change requires a new template. 3D printing is much more analogous to your home inkjet printer. Rather than using a physical template, you create a digital file on your computer, send it to your printer, and you get a precise image. To get another copy, you just hit print again. To get a different image, you don't change anything physical. You just change the digital file that you send to your printer. Similarly, 3D metal printers take a three-dimensional di digital image from your computer and turn it into three-dimensional hardware. To get a new product, you don't have to change your tooling, your suppliers, your processes, or retrain your staff, making 3D printing much more flexible than traditional manufacturing. Now, simplicity. To make this clear, let's just imagine two different ways that you could build a toy space shuttle. I'm going to use Legos as an analog to traditional manufacturing. So, I recently purchased this LEGO Space Shuttle Kit. It includes 2,354 different parts. Of those, there are 510 different unique parts, most of which are parts you can't just replace with parts from your standard LEGO kit. To put them together, you need to correctly follow 313 pages of assembly instructions. In contrast, I was able to download a digital file that allowed me to print this plastic space shuttle using a standard desktop 3D printer. The printed shuttle has the same dimensions as the LEGO model, but was printed as one piece using standard plastic filaments. The entire process from the time I sent the, the file to the printer took about 24 hours, but without anyone watching it. That's 2,354 parts consolidated into one. That's 313 pages of assembly instructions replaced by one computer program and one sheet of instructions to tell me how to load the file. Now, it's fair to call those examples cute, and they're not going to launch anything into space. However, this is. This is the Stargate 3D printing platform developed by Relativity Space. These are the largest metal printers in the world, and they are already able to produce complex parts up to 20 feet in diameter and 32 feet tall using one metal feedstock and operated by one technician. The part you see being printed here is the main structure of the upper stage of that Terran 1 rocket. It's seven and a half feet in diameter and about 20 feet tall. Using traditional manufacturing, this stage would be composed of at least a thousand separate parts, each manufactured using custom tools and elaborate assembly instructions over many months. Using Stargate, this can be printed in mere days. So I have always been a dreamer and a builder at heart. As a kid, I spent most of my time in school daydreaming about the new things I could build when I got home. These creations included all sorts of things, from an elaborate clubhouse, large bike ramps, even elaborate snow sledding courses. And as soon as I finished building each, I would turn my attention to convincing my friends to be the guinea pigs slash test dummies for my latest creation. <laughs> as a professional, I've never stopped my daydreaming. In fact, I've increasingly embraced my dreams. As I've progressed in my career, I've realized that the only way to advance the state of the art and innovate 
is to dream really big and to be willing to take big risks backed by science and engineering. And I'm now the father of my own two-year-old. And while it's still too early to know what her dreams will be, I'm incredibly excited about the future she'll get to experience. And I can't wait to see her dreams turn into reality. Thank you.